The Spirit of God drove Jesus into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. Do you know how long Satan had to prepare for that confrontation? Eons. He knew it was coming. He must have gone and evaluated thousands of ways to tempt the incarnate God who hadn't eaten in 40 days. And he came up with three, right? Boiled it down to three. We don't have time to deal with them all, so we're going to focus on the second. Look at me. If you will bow down and worship me, I will give you all the nations of the earth. The human side of Christ was tempted because of the ability to save mankind without having to go to the cross. I can bypass the cross and I will have the sheep that I want, the whole human race. But they wouldn't have been saved. They would have looked saved, but they wouldn't have been saved. Because without the death on the cross, it wasn't about Satan's control over humanity. It was that God's justice had to be satisfied. Am I preaching yet? And now comes the next and most salient point. He turned it down. But I'm going to tell you that a generation of pastors did not. Because they, when they were told by the devil, take out the cross and your church will grow, where Jesus said no, they said yes. And you began to create make-believers instead of disciples. And you've started to be rewarded for the verses you skipped and how abbreviated your service was. You began to be rewarded for letting the people exalt you to superstar status in a dark exchange for keeping the demands of God off of their life. And so we had a generation that didn't know why abortion was wrong because they were never instructed. Well, you say, Mario, don't you think that having had the massive churches that we have was a good thing? Let me tell you something. The devil uses the same thing the mafia has used for years. How do I operate freely in the city of New York? I'm going to buy me a judge. I'm going to buy me a police captain. I'm going to give money to my overt enemy and get them to send my influence out there. So we became the unwitting co-conspirators of the destruction of morals in the state of California. You say, Ma, that's a hard word. Well, listen, there's no such thing as a free lunch. <laughs> but how many of you are ready to get rid of all of that? How many of you are ready to get rid of that and go back to being the people of God who preach the word of God, who allow the Holy Spirit to move and do not care what it does? We don't care about what people think. Because what? That's going to deliver the drug addict. Help me. Sir. That's going to save the prostitute. That's going to turn someone from death into life. That's going to make somebody a new creation. Somebody shout right now. We put the half of the church that the Spirit of God was allowed to organize and then we created a body of the church that the Holy Spirit would have zero say in. And then in place of the Spirit, we'd hire spin doctors, Madison Avenue salesmen, administrators that knew everything about man but nothing about God. And the devil sat back and laughed at you. You know why? Because he doesn't respect anything but the anointing. He doesn't move except by nothing breaks the yoke but the anointing. And the devil will say, you can have all these fake victories you want. You can have all this outward appearance you want. You can have all this good looking and the world will think you're a big success, but you can't get rid of one basic devil. Well, I'm sick of that. And I want to turn you into a fire-breathing monster for Christ. I want to turn you into a fire-breathing monster for Christ. I want you to get ready to say, devil, the lame will walk, the blind will see. 
the deaf will hear and the lost will be saved and we will literally be able to tell devils to get back into the pit where they belong. Now I want to ask you a question. How many of you here are ready to become armed and dangerous preachers of the gospel? In California, in California. Hallelujah. Bifurcate means that you split. We have a split that we need to get rid of. I'm going to bring groups together. You know, there's a reason that God created the prophetic camp, created the healing camp, the word of faith camp, and other camps. And it's amazing how soundproof our campsites are to each other. But we have all these camps. And God did that. That wasn't the devil. God did that. God gave specific groups core appreciation of truth. Because otherwise, we would have nothing to do with each other. In Acts chapter 5, the Bible tells us that all 12 apostles were arrested at one time. Think about that. It's the only moment in all of Christian history that every apostle of Christianity was in jail together. And they thought it was Satan ending the church, but it was God forcing them to see each other. And there was the word of faith guy sitting next to the prophetic guy, sitting next to our beloved Assembly of God guy, the pre-trip, post-trip, the pan-millennials, they say it just pan out, the guy that believed in spot removing and the one that believed in total immersion baptism. And they're all sitting there together looking at each other. You're not nearly as nasty as I said you were in my pulpit. <laughs> Anybody here right now? And the Bible says that the angel sat there. This is the Murillo translation. I suppose you boys are wondering why I've called you all here today. I'm fixing to open up this jail door, but I want to tell you three things that I want you to do when you get out of here. Number one, he said, I want you to stand together. It's time for us to not see where we disagree with our brother, but to see what God is doing in every single camp. And to say, I see God in you. Somebody help me right now. I see God in you. I see God at work in you. And your, your word is valuable and, and needed. Now, next, he said, stand together. Number one, stand together. The workers of evil, the communistic tendency, the leftist socialist agenda for California, the Equality Act that will shut down your church. The wolves are at the door. Wake up. Don't drink any more Coca cola Why, Wake up and understand that God is sending a signal through the out, all of the state of California. Get over the fear. Look, listen to me. We sing this song, there's an army rising up. I've never seen an army take so long to rise up. We've been singing that song for 15 years. There's an army rising up. Every time they sing it, I look around. Grape nuts. Look, it's time for us to quit. To, listen, do you know that the Holy Spirit led us to write those songs in advance of this day? They didn't make sense back then. We had songs that says, we eat giants for our bread. Man, everybody's on a low carb diet. I don't see that. <laughs> now, and then it said, there's an army rising up to break every chain, to break every chain. So God allowed us to have the worship choruses in advance but now reality is caught up with us. And we can no longer symbolically sing those songs. They've got to be real. We've got to tell the devil there is an army that's already rose, risen up. It's already here. We're already unified. We're already, we're ready. Somebody give God a shout. We are ready. We are ready. We are ready.